Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. We have a few announcements. First of all, we are starting Sunday school and confirmation classes today in person after the first service, and we'll be doing that with masks and being socially distanced. Uh, but looking forward to starting Sunday school and confirmation classes up in person. We've been doing some of it uh, spread out, but part of the reason we're doing that is because the Ethiopian, the OELS, OELMS congregation is returning to worship today. So they'll be coming in and sitting in their pews. And, uh, but uh, I don't think a lot will change for us. We're going to be cleaning up afterwards, um, sanitizing things. But not a lot will change. But again, a reminder that the OELMS congregation is now going to be worshiping in the building again. And we'll have their kids in Sunday school and confirmation. So. The Women's Auxiliary to the Federation of Lutheran Churches of Cincinnati Festival in Gathering is October 25th at St. Mark's. Um, see today's insert for complete details on that. 
flood bucket project is continues to be underway and we are also encouraged by continuing our sermon here series hands-on faith is the theme of the day we'll be talking about how all the different parts of our body we use to serve christ and uh today the focus is on end that covers our announcements for this morning uh we'll begin with our opening bell and Oh, Almighty 
God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and to sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all. And in the stead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue with the Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love and yours forever. The stone the builders rejected. As we come the this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Glory be to God on Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah and sort of reminds us of how God was very hands on with his people Israel, um, and also how he is with us. Isaiah chapter 5, Song of a Man, the Lord, painting a vineyard. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a third, very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine bed. He looked for it to yield grapes. But it yielded wild fruits. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more is there to do for my vineyard that I have not done for it? When I looked to for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild fruits? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. 
I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and briars and thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds that they, they bring no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. The men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed. For righteousness, but behold, an outcry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from Philippians chapter 4, where the Lord encourages us to think about what is good, right, honorable, trustworthy. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of the praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things in the God of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
mercy and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's fascinating to watch a top chef dice onions or peppers at 100 miles per hour. It's amazing to see how precise hand control someone can have when sewing or doing woodwork or even playing sports. And kids can sometimes do some pretty impressive things with their hands, too. For instance, uh, Elisha knows what to do with his hands. He's very proud of this thing he made. Our hands can do some amazing things. And our message for today is about hands, and so as well as our gospel lesson. It's about a man with a withered hand. Now imagine doing your whole life with one hand tied behind your back, right? That's essentially what this man had to do. How could you, for today, drive, use a phone, eat, or show affection for another human being? It would be hard enough for us to do that today, even with all our technological advances, but think back, living in an agricultural-based society. I mean, there's no way with one hand you could take care of land, you couldn't even like dig with a shovel. And there were frankly no jobs available to a man who had only one hand. Even if there was a job you technically could do, well, you can rest assured that a guy with two hands could do it much better and much faster than he could. And how about his life, love life for that matter? I mean, what woman looking out, especially in that day, for the good of her own life and her future children would squander her life on a man with no prospects who could not provide very well for them. It's possible, we don't really know the backstory of this man, that maybe he had developed this later in life. Um, and But if he had, his name might have been Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, because if he had a wife, he couldn't keep her. The guy certainly couldn't even support himself, much less. A family. Those of you who have been laid up with an injury or sickness or perhaps quarantine can perhaps begin to appreciate this man's burden. He felt a pinch probably of hospital fees and lost job income. He had hardly any purpose at all. Again, I think most of us felt a little bit of that kind of during, even during when we had the new shutdown. And just imagine if he really, truly couldn't do barely anything. I mean, he, probably the only thing he practically could do was beg to get enough to get by from day to day, living from hand to mouth, only he was doing it at a disadvantage with only one hand to get to his mouth. Well, we can see Jesus' policy on charity here, which which I think is an interesting one. Don't give him a hand out. Don't give him a hand up. Just give him a new hand. Uh, Jesus has compassion when he sees this man. And he told this man, stretch out your hand. Now, that was exactly the problem. Right? He's got a withered hand. He can't stretch it out. It's almost insulting for Jesus to say, stretch out your hand. But since this is, well, Jesus, not Jeffrey or Jimbo talking, when he says it, it works. The guy does it, surprising himself probably more than anyone else. But you know who wasn't surprised? Some in the crowds. They anticipated this happening, were looking forward to it, planning for it. But it was not because they had great faith. Rather, it was with a withered soul and twisted thoughts that they watched Jesus heal this man, and inwardly they rejoice. They rejoice inside, but on the outside, they scattered. They rejoice because now they could get Jesus in trouble. Oh, you worked on the Sabbath. You're going to be in trouble. Uh, Jesus is healing on the Sabbath. Now, in the actual Old Testament, it's not really illegal to heal on the Sabbath. God never said that, but in the zealous and uh, zealous nature of the Pharisees, they described they had developed a tradition of the elders 
a tradition that the Pharisees were now subscribing to in the most part. And in that definition, healing, or a doctor doing work, was terrible on Saturday. Now, Jesus was trending on Twitter at the time. He was becoming very popular. Right? Some people didn't like that. You see, the important folks didn't want competition. Or maybe it was because Jesus told them to repent. Perhaps it was because he was just so outside the norms, or his kindness, or maybe his ability to look into the human heart offended them, or perhaps scared them. To the liberals, it's back to the fundamentals and back to the Bible. Theology was making them uncomfortable and delirious. To the conservatives, it might have been his radical challenges to the way things were done that made them nervous and angry. The opponents of Jesus, for whatever reason, wanted him destroyed and discredited. It says that in our gospel lesson, and it says it even earlier in Mark's gospel. And they think. Right? They think that if Jesus loses his popularity, he will lose his power, and he will no longer be a threat. Of course, they're wrong. Uh, Jesus' mission of salvation was not to cater to the people's whims or the latest trends. He didn't let what people thought of him stop him from carrying out his mission. And what was his mission? Well, part of it was, Jesus said, whatever you do unto the least of these, you do unto me. And elsewhere, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The question for us today is, is your attitude more like Christ's, more like these opportunistic opponents of Jesus? My wife and I just watched a movie on, on Apple TV, Boys Sing. It was kind of, it was very fitting. It was about uh, these boys who were going to uh, kind of a big election and uh, the whole process that was involved. And it was sort of, uh, it was enlightening, but part of it was kind of a little, you know, frightening or sobering because all the things they were doing were the same kind of things politicians do. And they were very opportunistic. Uh, we've seen much going on. Of course, we're in the middle of what I have, you know, the, the most, the last 30 days or whatever, of the most political time in America's four year cycle. And I think it's particularly pertinent that we ask these questions Do you care about the world around you, the suffering, the death? Or do you, are you just eager to see something go wrong? So you can say, I told you, or ah, look how he failed, or look how she failed, or look how they failed. Sometimes we act like Jesus' opponents. No, when we don't care about people, we just want to see some people fail. Politics often end up like that, this is no exception. Uh, most people aren't really ready to listen, or maybe that's a little cynical, but that's what it feels like. Most people aren't really ready to listen, but they are ready to argue with you, right? What we often want to know is, whose side are you on anyway? Are you on my side, or are you one of the bad guys? And if you don't think like me, I'm just going to try to prove you wrong, rather than trying to figure out why, you see things differently than I do. Now, in sports, you know, usually you don't cheer for failure. Yeah, you fail, great job. Particularly when you're on the same team. Yet sometimes we find ourselves cheering for, you know, nowadays the other party, whatever that means, to fail. Sort of. Frustrating how many political ads out there are not talking, are talking primarily about what the other guys did wrong well and not about what they're going to do right. Sometimes it's not just about an uh, issue or policy, which is good to have, you know, we should be trying to pursue the right sorts of policies and the right sorts of actions, but often it turns into or descends into cheering for the people of faith. Instead of empathizing or caring for those who are hurt or damaged, we 
We instead rejoice inside that things are going badly for those who we oppose. Instead of rejoicing at good news, when the other side does something good or something goes well, we grumble and try to find something wrong with it, to spin it, it spin it to reflect negatively to those we disagree with. And it certainly is not just one side that does this. It ain't just the crowds that sometimes cheer for failure and weep at success. Sometimes we do the same with individuals too, don't we? Those that work or those who we disagree with and we secretly rejoice a little when something goes wrong for them. Serves them right. They got what they had coming. Right? Again, we are often our hearts, if not our words, our actions are often hurtful and not helpful. We all need to be healed of our withered souls so that our hands can be more like our Savior's and heal instead of hurt. We need less pointing of fingers and talking behind our hands and more hands that are looking to help. Working together, as they said, make many hands make light work. So how do we use our hands? Well, take Jesus' advice and say exactly what he said to this man and stretch out your hand. You see, we don't have to keep our hands all to ourselves, shriveled up so that the only people we help are those closest to us, or in worst case scenario, only ourselves. Jesus tells us to stretch out your hand. But I can't, you say. I, I've got to take care of me and my own. If I don't fight tooth and nail, I'll lose. If I don't hold on to my possessions and with a tight fist, why, I'll lose all that I've got. To which Jesus might reply, whoever would lose, save their life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, for the gospel, will find it. You won't know what you that what you'll lose is far less than what you will gain until you stretch out your hand. Don't let go of your stuff. Let go of your plans. You see, you can't receive God's good plans for you until you drop whatever it is that you're holding on to. Then and only then will you begin to receive from your Heavenly Father all that you need. And you will find yourself more blessed than you could have ever hoped. So our focus this week again is to let's stretch out our hands, not just to some, or not just to those we like, but to all that we can make. Now, you may not be able to, particularly not without the help of Jesus, but since Jesus tells us to, just as Jesus told this man to do the impossible, and he did, we find that if we pay attention to Jesus, we'll do, we'll end up doing what we thought was impossible. Helping in ways, perhaps, that we didn't think we were capable of or qualified for. Talking to people that we once cheered against. Perhaps showing some skin to those with a different skin tone than our eyes. May our hands reflect the compassion of the male mark hands of our Savior. And that's the challenge for this week is to use your hands for healing and for helping. That could mean a variety of things as a tip talk typically does, but as the good old saying goes, talk is cheap, right? We hear a lot of talk these days. But today, this week, instead of talking about what the world should be like, go do it. Maybe that means building something for someone else. Maybe it means comforting a family member. Maybe it means stepping out and, and reaching out in a way that you've been thinking about or too nervous or unsure about. Maybe the Lord has put something good and wholesome or healing on, on your heart, and it's just time to take a step in that direction. Talk is cheap. So step out and get hands-on in this world. And with Jesus' help, we will make the world at least a little better place. Because
because we too have been sent as the hands and feet of Jesus. So, heal and restore. That's what a Christian's hands are for. In Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with our offering. Uh, again, we don't physical offering, but we do appreciate uh, your help as we still have bills and things today. So um, we have the offering box in back or online and secure and easy to give there as well as our uh, right at our homepage at GraceMinn.org. We we'll continue with our uh, with some music at this time. <laughs> Pray that the church may prevail over our enemies. We pray also for our enemies. 
that you may lay your healing hand upon them and walk, watch over them and uh, lead them to repentance and lead them to the knowledge of the truth as you want all men and women to be saved and to come to that knowledge and find life in your name. We pray also that as we pray for these men that we, you would inspire men and women to go into church with vocations and bless those currently preparing for church work. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty Lord, give to the nations both the desire for and the blessing of peace. Toward the action of terrorists and those who would oppress, bless our president, and we pray especially at this time that you would watch over him, uh, President Donald Trump, with, as he has uh, COVID, we pray that you would watch over him and, and bring healing to him. Uh, uh, Lord, I'm sure that brings up many for Many are concerned and others are uh, may wish to see him not in office. So we pray, Lord, that uh, you would watch over him, whatever our political beliefs may be, uh, that you would help us, uh, that you would help him. And Lord, as far as the election goes, we pray for your discernment and your will. We know that you are in charge. And we pray uh, you watch over all that happens. And uh, as much as you are willing and able to be merciful and steer our nation uh, where it ought to go. We know not where that is, uh, but we ask that you would continue to lead and guide us. Be also with our governor and all who pass and enforce and judge our laws. Spare us from disease and fear. Deliver the poor from wine. Help us to provide jobs and worthy employment for all. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, deliver those who help and who help those in need. Help share us especially for this week for Lois Young, Billy Weinkemper, Dave and Linda Isley, Esther Goldfist, Edie Hampton, Becky Canberg, Linda McKay, Terry McKay, Nancy Niehaus, Charlie Otten, Donna Nemo, Lester Rampage, Ken Ross, Rita Sohn, Becky Stamper, David Stamper, Ruth Thomas, Clyde Wallweber, and Friends of the Congregation, Bucky, Beth, Lord, you know these individuals and their concerns and their fears, and we pray that you would lay your healing hand upon them and could be your will, and that you would also give them an extra measure of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's body and blood in this holy supper, that we may be strengthened in faith and renewed in love and nurtured in faith by our community. Give to us unity of faith and harmony in our life together. Bring us at last with the saints who have gone before, that we may attain everlasting life and dwell in your presence forever. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy God, give us a willing spirit that we may serve you with all that we have and all that we are. Help us to be faithful and fruitful in the godly use of your resources and gifts, that we may use them in accord with your will and for your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Blessed Lord, keep us from resentful hearts that would begrudge your mercy or live selfishly for ourselves and teach us to live for you the life that you have given us, treasuring in our hearts all that is good and wise, and seeking after these things. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear us, O Lord, and give answer to the prayer of your people and pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, whom with the Father and the Spirit, you are one God and one Lord, forever and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. <laughs>
mercy and his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And be us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take me, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all. This cup is New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do is often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. <laughs>
Thank you. 